Absolutely. That's how it happens. Right, I think we should start. So, hi everyone, my name is Andrew Kahanowski. I'm Chief Technology Officer at CyberVision. Um, I'm also leading the team that works on Ka Open Source IoT platform. And today I would like to talk to you about a few things which are related to the IoT revolution that we are not only witnessing, but some also actively participating in. It's been a very interesting time lately. Um, what we've seen is a tremendous advancement in the hardware technology, which has led to proliferation of uh, low cost and highly powerful devices, which allowed us to enter this new era of IoT. And while it's still very new and fresh um, and exciting and so on, um, it's also becoming very um, very competitive field. There are new IoT products being launched almost daily and in order to succeed the companies have to have a very clear path as to how they get from the concept, the idea of their product, all the way to production. And there are some technologies that can help them and come to the rescue. So. Let's talk about this perfect ideal picture. IoT wouldn't be um, successful if it wasn't for the data. Data is essentially the key um, in the success of IoT. It is the ability to acquire all of this data that was pre previously hidden from us, get it, um, get access to it, get visibility of this data, and, um, and get, give uh, people the capability to do wiser decisions based on the data that they, they obtain. So conceptually, it doesn't matter what your, um, what your device is, what, what the IoT product this is. One of the more, most important things is extracting the data from the field, from these devices, and driving it all the way to the presentation to the end user. So there are endpoints which we want to make possible to, uh, which we want to enable to send data to cloud, and then we use this cloud conceptually to present data through various channels, from mobile applications to web dashboards to um, some monitoring systems and so on. Now, all of this is understandable. The piece that is a little bit scary is the one right in the middle of this picture this cloud. It's a very abstracted thing, and it is especially scary when you come from a clear field when there is nothing that you have and you have to build the entire system from scratch. So what I want to talk about is the technologies that help deliver this cloud faster and make this vision a reality. So I want to talk about two platforms here. It's the Ka Open Source IoT platform and CouchBase and the combination of CouchBase Server and CouchBase Lite. Let's first of all talk about why Ka, right? Why, why would you pick this platform? This is a uh, fully featured IoT middleware platform, which gives you the capability to um, to adapt to your specific solution and, uh, and build your product faster. What is important here is in terms of devices that, we, that the platform can support, um, the footprint that it requires is uh, sub 10K. So this is not something that you would easily integrate any technology into, right? And many of these IoT products, they um, do not even have operating system on board, so it's just firmware. Um, 
and with uh, Kaa platform, even despite there is no operating system and you cannot write apps, what you still can do is you can take one of the SDKs, that's C SDK, and bake that directly into the firmware. So that is important. Then the data delivery with the platform, like Ka is out of the box, it's guaranteed. It's guaranteed, it's solid, it's reliable, both on the endpoint side, so it doesn't matter what sort of data you're transferring from, the, from your endpoints, from your devices to the cloud. Um, there is a storage which goes into the endpoint, into the device, and then, then there is the bit which, um, uh, which reliably delivers that data all the way to your cloud, uh, to your middleware, and further to the database. Transport security is also granted. It's built into the platform, so there is encryption uh, at rest and in flight in the platform. Um, efficiency data serialization is also very important, especially in terms of very constrained devices, and I'll talk about that a little bit later. Uh, the platform is horizontally scalable and fault tolerant. Now, one of the most important pieces is 100% open source, and it's uh, licensed under Apache 2.0, which is probably one of the most um, business-friendly uh, licenses out there. Um, it allows you to rapidly build applications using uh, one of the three existing right now is the case, C, C++, and Java. Um, and in, it uh, comes pre-integrated with some of the popular uh, platforms, but um, in general, integration with the new ones is not a big deal. Doesn't matter which operating system they run and whether they even run it. Now, why Couchbase? So first of all, it's this flexible document-oriented data model that Couchbase has, um, the capability to basically collect any sorts of data uh, from, the, from the field, from the devices. It's the elastic scalability, it's consistently high performance. Um, it's the capability to do big data analytics in real time. It's the um, availability, high availability that is offered by Couchbase. It is also, well, as you know, it comes in two forms. So there is a version that is open source and it's Apache licensed. And last but not the least, and it's pretty important here, is this capability to synchronize uh, Couchbase server with Couchbase Lite with the new synchronization um, server capabilities. And finally, support of various uh, mobile platforms. Some of those are listed here. So the architecture now in this slide, it, uh, it looks familiar, but here, I have expanded just a little bit how this works with uh, the two systems being in place. So Ka is a middleware, um, essentially talks directly with the devices and collects these bits and pieces of telemetry data from the devices, um, aggregates them and pushes them to Couchbase server, which then uses the synchronization server to synchronize some of the, some of the bits of the data with the user applications sitting in the edge at the user's devices. Let's explore a little bit how the data flow actually works in this architecture. So at the very, at the very bottom there is a device, which is a device in the field, the IoT product. Um, let's say that it has certain sensors that we are collecting data from, and sensors can be pretty much anything. Those can be physical sensors or purely programmable sensors like uh, uh, detections of, race, of uh, uh, certain exceptional conditions, race conditions, uh, and so on. So this raw data is within the application in the device or the firmware in the device, gets, uh, gets fed into Ka SDK that is embedded into the application, and that automatically ensures delivery of that data from the endpoint, from the device, assuming of course that it has wireless connectivity or wired connectivity or any other connectivity to the internet, to the server. It ensures delivery of that to the serv uh, to CA services. And um, also in the, in the open source, there is an existing couch-based connector, which you don't have to program anymore, so that the data that gets accumulated from the uh, from the devices by the platform gets automatically fed into Couchbase. Um, again, this is a connector that can be easily just deployed, configured, and you're ready to go. So 
where this data goes next from Ka is to Couchbase. And at this level, the amount of data gets larger because uh, we are essentially feeding in aggregated data from potentially millions of endpoints. Um, now, in order to present the users with the data that they want to see from their devices or their aggregation or their collections of devices, um, within Couchbase, you can define views and um, this, the summarized data, the summarized documents then can be uh, synchronized with the Couchbase Lite installed within the um, application on the mobile phone or the mobile application um, or any other applications through the, through the Couchbase Sync Gateway. Now I want to talk a little bit about um, how the data is actually shaped. Um, and there is a secret sauce in here. Um, this is uh, Apache Abra. So the key in, these, um, in the combination of these two, two platforms is the use, the fact that the entire set of data is structured all the way from the application in the field, from the IoT device, all the way down to the database. What this means is that you're not just getting blobs of data. You don't have to interpret them, you don't have to crunch them, you don't even have to parse them. Um, what you get are perfectly well-defined um, documents that Couchbase can immediately build analytics on top of. So this our schema definition is something that you start off um, with by uh, defining in the, in the Ka platform. And that's something that becomes embedded into the SDK. And that essentially um, demands the devices that you build, the IoT products that you build, uh, demands to submit data in the way which is easy to process and easy to analyze. And again, it's Apache Hover compatible. Now I want to go through a quick, um, quick use case or uh, quick demonstration. So this is one of the demos that we built for, for a conference last month. Um, it's an example of, uh, of an application in the smart energy space where you have like solar power panels and they may be installed uh, pretty much anywhere, the roofs, uh, there, there are plenty at SFO, at top of the airport, if you saw that, um, at top of the airport buildings. And what you want to do is you want to see how, how well performing they are, how much energy they are producing, and you want to see this data um, real time so that you would know how much data your solar, um, solar panels are producing compared to how much data, uh, how much energy is being drawn from, from the grid. So, in this demo, what we are doing is uh, we are introducing a concept of zones. So there are solar, uh, solar panels installed in several zones. And uh, there is an application which runs on Intel Edison that, well, in this demo case, of course, it essentially um, measures the, uh, the power production by every uh, solar, power, uh, solar uh, panel and sends this data all the way to our cloud uh, where this data gets accumulated, um, essentially pre-processed, grouped into these zones, and then through the synchronization of Couchbase server which got, was Couchbase, uh, Couchbase Lite, it gets, uh, um, gets synchronized to the application on a tablet. So this uh, user interface on the right is, uh, is an Android application that monitors these six zones. There is the current power production um, at the gadgets in the uh, bottom left, uh, total power output uh, at, uh, uh, at the top, and then there is a, uh, 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 this uh, greenish yellow um, thing is essentially a, com a combination of the power that is the system is drawing from the grid versus the power that it um, gets from the solar power plan, uh, plant. So I mentioned that the data structure, data is very well structured. So on the left here I have the data record schema and let's go through this real quick. So this is the telemetry data that we are getting in the database 
from the application in the field. Um, uh, this uh, JSON essentially defines the way in which the data is laid out. So every power record or every vol voltage record um, here is a record which contains several fields. There is a timestamp and there is an array of samples. I'm not sure, okay, you can, you can see my, uh, my pointer here. So it's an array of samples. Um, each of the samples is essentially a record itself and that record contains uh, three fields. It's the, the zone identifier, it's the panel identifier, and it's the voltage that that panel currently is producing. So a single device out there can uh, report multiple uh, power readings from the sensor, get the data into this document, which is uh, structured with this Avro schema, and submit this data through the CA platform to Couchbase to be, uh, to be processed and synchronized uh, with the application on the, on the tablet. Now, on the right is a uh, very short code snippet that shows how this schema translates into the code that you have to write in the application to enable this data collection. And it's very simple. Um, in C++ here, um, essentially what happens is we um, we go through the list of uh, connected uh, uh, solar panels. Uh, we get the current um, output. We stick in into the sample. You can see here that um, there are fields which are called zone ID, panel ID, and voltage. And they correspond to the names on the left here. And that is not, that is not magic. That is something that was automatically compiled by Ka platform. So basically the definition of the schema got translated into, um, into data object model definitions, into the structures in C++ in this case. And instead of working with something low level like JSON representation or XML representation or, or inventing your own data format, everything you have to do is deal with these objects that have been predefined for you based on the data schema that you defined in the platform. So once the record is, uh, is populated, it's essentially added to the log storage and the platform, uh, the platform SDK itself takes care of um, the data upload when the, um, when the connection becomes available and so on. Now, the beauty of this approach is not only that it makes it very simple to program uh, this telemetry data collection, um, and there are many other features that, uh, that are also available in, in similar shape, but also the fact that it becomes very similar in various platforms. So this is a snippet from a C++ application, but here are a couple that, um, that were produced by simulating the same uh, code in Java and, and C. So again, you are not working with the low level uh, representation of the data, but rather you have objects. So on the left, there is a Java snippet. And again, you see here that um, Essentially, in this case, it's even simpler. So we just create an object, which is voltage sample, which contains the zone ID, panel ID, and voltage readings that are current to, um, um, that are currently read. And the names, again, they correspond to what, whatever was written here. The name of the object type is voltage sample here. So it translated into the voltage sample object in the code, in the SDK code. Um, and again, you produce, uh, you produce these objects, you add samples to the, um, to the list, and you push this data to the log storage, which gets the records further transmitted to the cloud and put into Couchbase. Um, I won't go through the C example. It's basically the same, except that instead of the objects, uh, here we operate on uh, pure C structures. Now, here is how it looks like from the Couchbase perspective. So this is an example of one document um, that was pushed from the, from the endpoint with the list of, uh, of panels with their corresponding zones and the current voltage. So you see here that this is a perfectly uh, well understandable uh, JSON document that is easy, easy to read and, um, and also easy to, to process. So, what we are trying to do here 
Um, this document has uh, six zone IDs from zero to five. And what we want to do is imagine that there are like millions of these devices or at least like a hundred of those. And they have a mix of these zones connected to them. So they are essentially reporting data from, um, from solar power panels from their various zones uh, in various combinations. And we want to aggregate the data from, um, uh, from the uh, solar pan uh, panels from the same zone so that we know what the average and what the total production per zone is. So what happens in this case is in Couchbase we define a view and the view is very simple. There is a map function and a reduce function. So the map function is on the left. So the timestamp, um, it essentially it essentially maps the data received from all of these documents into um, uh, by using the timestamp and the, the zone ID. And the reduce function calculates stats. So that efficiently um, aggregates the data from various zones collected from various sensors into, um, into an aggregated um, view, which contains the timestamp. So this is a uh, time series data essentially. Um, and it is, it is also mapped to uh, the zone IDs, which go from zero to five over here. Now, once we have this view, in order to now synchronize this view to the tablet, to the application in the tablet, uh, we have to have um, a uh, small job in there because there is no way right now to synchronize the view from Couchbase server to, to Couchbase mobile. Uh, so there is a small worker application which essentially copies uh, the uh, latest X amount of records, the latest X amount of documents from the view into, uh, um, uh, into Couchbase as, as, as separate records essentially, as separate documents. Uh, this is how it looks like after the uh, MapReduce processing, after the um, after processing with the, with the view. So there is a list of zones. Um, it contains the count of records, the sum of the voltage output that we calculated previously in the, um, in the reduce function, and the zone ID. And there is a timestamp which, uh, which is associated with the entire list of, uh, of the zones. Now, the next thing that happens is in the Android application, we have uh, Couchbase Lite in the, in the application. So we set up uh, a channel which, uh, which is called Toddles. So these Toddles is something that we are synchronizing on, um, not without synchronizing the entire data set, we are just synchronizing the subset which is post-processing post um, data set. Um, so we create a channel and we set up uh, pool replication from the server to the mobile application. And finally, in the code of the Android application itself, we uh, create a view of the database um, that gives you um, that gives you tuples of timestamps and documents. And these documents are the ones that you saw previously on, on the previous slide. <laughs> now, I hope that Wi-Fi here works, and I want to show you the result of all of this. As we move on down the street, we go by a solar okay. power station, which supplies our city with electricity. Sound. It is comprised of a set of solar panels and a dashboard application so you, that allows us to monitor see here the how real time this response and distributed is. energy. Once you close Every one of the solar, solar panel plugged um, into the station, panels, can essentially be the data gets propagated the all the way from at the core of the smart energy. Um, the data gets propagated all the way from this Intel Edison chip here. It gets propagated to our server, and in, uh, in that case, it was it was in, in Virginia, where the map reduce curing and um, synchronization to the tablet happens. And again, I'll switch off the sound. I just want you to see how quickly the dashboard responds to this. So once you close one of the panels, immediately the readings change. So this is a fairly quick response time. 
Okay. So this is how it looked like in the, in the real life. And finally, results. So after we had the integration with, between Ka uh, platform and Couchbase um, implemented, and it's now part of uh, open source code, uh, the implementation of the synchronization code itself just took two days. Um, the, the implementation of the overall um, solution just took two days. Um, the telemetry data delivery was tested to be reliable. Um, we, we ran tests, stress tests of uh, up to four million of records and every single record successfully was pushed to Couchbase. End-to-end um, -end latency from, deliver, from pushing data from the endpoint to the cloud and all the way to delivering that to the user application um, was under two seconds. Um, this, this sort of solution gives you horizontal scalability. You can add both Couchbase nodes if you need to, and you can add uh, cooperation server nodes uh, if you're running into uh, a very successful deployment with tens of millions of devices, that's probably something you would want. Um, the integration is uh, very clear and simple, and there is no need to rewrite that again. Basically, you have the SDK that you embed into the application, and on the other hand, you just read the data from, uh, from Couchbase Lite in the, in the uh, mobile application. Um, now, the secret sauce, the Apache Avro data schema makes it really easy and simple to query this data and process this data. So I showed you a very, very simple example, but you can imagine how easily it is translated to more complex use cases and uh, how e easy it is to analyze the data which, is, uh, which you know what to expect from because you know the schema of this data. Um, and finally, this Couchbase Lite pool replication which allowed us to set up synchronization from the server to the um, client application with almost zero um, effort was also a very, very cool thing. So I thank you for your attention, and if you have any questions, please, please feel free. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Can you go back to the slide two? Slide two? This is my slide two. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Well, in that specific case, we um, we used C++ SDK. C++ SDK is more complex than, than C SDK. So I'll talk a little about uh, the minimum requirements. And the minimum requirements are with uh, C SDK, uh, that one can run on something as small as Cortex-M0 with uh, uh, the memory consumption under 10 kilobytes of RAM. But I'm pretty sure that you can port it into something even smaller, and there is an easy capability to switch off features that you are not using, which would um, slim down the, the volume and uh, the, the memory consumption even more. Right. Uh, sorry, say it again. How powerful is the structure definition? Or? If it wasn't structured data. Well, the beauty of using structured data is the fact that you can write applications for um, virtually any hardware and any software. And at the data analytics and at the management layer, you wouldn't worry about what it is down there. And you wouldn't worry to have, uh, you wouldn't worry to remember like what, how this data was structured. And um, you have a very clear path to um, improving your product and adding more features and adding more data into the schema. Uh, because um, uh, the platform itself keeps track of the historical data schemas and the server remains compatible with the older versions of your, um, of your endpoints. So you don't have to re-implement that yourself. It essentially, um, improves significantly the, the handling of the data and reduces the amount of worry on implementing this handling yourself. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, yeah. 
So this is a more detailed diagram. So um, car components, one of the components is the server, which is here on the left. So this can be as small as just a single machine, which would run all of the services and it could uh, scale horizontally to like dozens of or hundreds of uh, machines in, in the, wide, um, in the uh, larger deployments. Um, so this is car component now. There is an interface here which injects data, telemetry data received from the devices into uh, Couchbase server, right? So this is, this is where Couchbase server starts. Um, and finally, the, um, the last bit which, which is part of the platform is the SDK that is embedded into the endpoints. So this is something that is, um, that is generated the, uh, based on your schema definitions. So if you, if you remember the code that I showed, um, the schema definition translated into the objects that we were using in the code to be able to collect this telemetry data and push it to the cloud and push it to analytics. Yeah, go ahead. Um, live hundreds of thousands and tests tens of millions. I mean, in, in, in just uh, performance tests. But, well, the most important, most important question here is, uh, the pattern in which you use the platform, because uh, there are some applications which require more, more transactions, there are others which require less. And also telemetry is not the only feature here, so there are more like device management, like, uh, like configuration management, uh, uh, firmware updates, software updates, and so on and so forth. So it's, it's basically the workload that you're expecting from, from your application, leveraging all of these features with that, that matters. Uh, what's the typical throughput of, 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 of what? Oh, well, the latest tests that I saw were, were conducted on AWS like a week ago on a uh, pre-release version of uh, next version of um, That, um, there we were emulating load, uh, telemetry data load. Uh, every record was about one to two kilobytes large. So it's, well, fairly, fairly large uh, document. Um, and the server was handling, um, oh, there was actually an AWS mid-size uh, installation of three servers, and they were handling 180,000 of uh, records per second. So that's about 180 megabytes of data from endpoints. And well, that was a test, so there was like two or three thousand of endpoints basically storming the, the server and then pushing the data, the, the random data in there. Um, but again, they are just stress simulating. So in, in, real, in, the, in real scenarios, what we would have is certain caching. If this is not in a real-time application, then we would have certain caching in the, in the client. And then the client would essentially define triggers to, um, uh, to start the data upload. Right. Talking about in right. Well, that's that's a very interesting question. So, the perfect scenario is uh, basically create a new version of the firmware for the equipment so the and push. You need to go back and redo everything. Not redo everything. We would we would replace. Well, in terms of telemetry data collection, we could replace the part that uh, does that. that Stop. Right. Right, right, right. So that's perfect case scenario where you would be able to distribute the new firmware to your endpoints, right? And they, that would have um, our SDK embedded into it. Um, in worst case scenario, what we could do is um, if, if there is a way to basically do aggregation to some sort of, uh, mm, how you call it, um, intermediary box, Right, like you have a bunch of sensors, and they, as a first step, they they push push data to um, to some sort of a staging box, and that that box is easier to manage. Then we would put it in there. Mm 
and make that box representative of the equipment that stands Except behind that it. You are monitoring all of that your customer was gonna be done as you spend that in SCADA, so it's nothing more than a buffer. Um, yeah, well, <laughs> I do not suggest depending on SCADA. Uh, so again, no, the- it's not a matter, it's already there. It's not a matter of, the world is not stretched for you to you in, uh, input uh, your car into everything, right? It's already there. Now you cannot say, oh, let's demolish the whole city and now we are building a new city. No. You can do that in the Middle East, not in <laughs> Well, okay, there are, there are places on Earth where this can be done. So uh, we are not trying to replace something that already exists and works. What, we, what, what I'm talking about here is building these new applications because right now we are leveraging completely new hardware. It's an enablement platform, that's right. So, uh, pretty much. Well, we've seen we've seen some cases where this platform was introduced not not from day one, and still it worked significantly better than anything that was that was built in a house uh, previously. Um, but yes, this this is essentially an enablement technology that preferably it's it's not it's not what we are trying to achieve here. It's an enablement open source platform which is specifically designed for bringing new products to life faster and simple. Any other questions? No? Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.